Hello, welcome to this Q&A, to a very special Q&A. It's about the Atelier Ludwigsburg Paris, which is a program that is super special. And I'm very happy to have a uh, part of the producers here with me and also the um, teacher, the leader of the academy. Welcome to all of you. <laughs> Hi. No. <laughs> I guess before we start uh, with the with the participants, I would like to know briefly what's behind the atelier. Roman, can you please share a little bit about the program? Yeah. Hi. My uh, name is Roman Paul. I'm one of the two professors, along with Gerhard Meixner, on the German side of the program. And the Atelier Ludwigsburg Paris is a unique institution in Europe. It's a postgraduate program for international co-production. And it's a one year training um, that goes 24 seven and is based in Ludwigsburg at the Film Academy Baden-Württemberg and at La Femise in Paris. And at the same time, there's a, uh, also excursions to the Berlinale, to the Cannes Film Festival. There are internships in France and Germany and other countries. Uh, there's also a co cooperation with the NHTS in London and FTS. It's not the NHTS, I'm so COVID obsessed already by now. No, NFTS in, in London. Um, so it's an international program that is also um, composed one third of uh, students uh, based in Germany, one third of students based in France, and one third of students coming from the rest of the European unions and the rest of the world. Um, and the program is for one year and uh, teachers are only people who are actively working in the audiovisual industries. Thank you. As it is international, and I, and I see you really on international uh, producers here, upcoming producers. So maybe you could introduce yourself and also talk about the movies uh, just briefly that you just produced. Tico, can you start? Definitely. Hello, uh, thanks for inviting us. Uh, my name is Chico Nadirashvili and I come from Tbilisi, Georgia, Caucasus. And I decided to participate, I applied to this amazing program because I had already done some things on national level and I wanted to dive into, uh, let's say, so international co-production and especially European uh, co-production. And uh, I was selected and I, I'm really, really happy and thankful for that. Um, um, in collaboration, in co-production with um, our one of the fellow producers that was also part of our program, uh, Marion uh, de Miguel Varedes. She was from French side. We co-produced a short film called uh, Elusive Joy of Labor, and it was directed by uh, Yu Miao, a very talented director uh, who used to study in uh, Femis school. And uh, we shot this film and uh, we are quite happy with it. Um, hi, I'm. Uh, my name is Peter. Um, I'm from Germany. I um, live and work in Berlin. Um, I joined the atelier um, or applied, as Tico said, and was hoping to get in to um, kind of close a circle for myself, getting back to some earlier production um, experiences, but also, yeah, just getting more hands on into the uh, business of making films again. Um, and uh, luckily it worked out. I'm really happy I was able to to spend this year um, in the program and I'm happy to be here in the interview. Thank you for the invite. Um, and yes, together with my uh, French production partner, Clément Pelletier, I produced the film Dignity Keeper about um, one day in the life of a mobile nurse. And yeah, it was written by Lisa Brunke and directed by Sandro Rados and um it yeah um, has been an interesting and very um fulfilling experience making this film so i'm happy that um we've been able to show it here in the festival as well one thing um of course at the end of the uh, academic year um the graduation piece for the atelier ludwigsburg paris is uh, to produce a short film 
that goes along with a certain motto and that is being produced in international pairs. So one side has to be um, German or French and it needs to be another nationality. So the international co-production is already reflected in the production of the short films and they are being developed with uh, students from La Femis and uh, Film Academy Baden-Württemberg along with uh, Arte and commissioning editors from there. Um, and uh, the films are also broadcast on Arte every year and in their Mediathek. My name is Yu Xuan. Uh, I'm from China. Uh, uh, currently, I'm based in Beijing. Uh, uh, and like uh, everybody else, I applied at Lia uh, last year, earlier last year. And actually, I applied uh, from the, the, the French side. Uh, I was really happy uh, to be able to to be part of the uh, program because I've uh, lived and uh, worked and studied in France uh, for quite some time and uh, I've had some experience in sales and distribution in France and then I went back to China, I have some distribution production experience there, but I never got the chance to really um, go deeper on the international uh, slash European China level. So actually uh, I learned a lot uh, during this one year training and I uh, was of course really happy with the results. Uh, and uh, speaking of the film, I actually worked with, uh, uh, with a director slash pr uh, producer called uh, Yuho and Baye and we produced together a short film called 360 Degrees. It, it tells a story of uh, about three young teenagers, uh, teenagers boring, uh, uh, bored, being bored on a Saturday afternoon. And they hang out uh, on uh, discovering that uh, our Google Street car are passing by taking pictures of them. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Olivia. Hello, yes. Um, my name is Olivia and uh, I joined the atelier from uh, Weimar where I studied media art and design and further worked as a production assistant and I felt like I need uh, the next step to the producing direction and yeah, I heard a lot of good things about the atelier program. I was really lucky that I got in and uh, I'm happy that I was a participant last year. Um, yeah, and I produced the short film von Schrauben und Vögeln. It's the English title Screw It um, from Vincent Dolinsek. And I had a good partner on my side. Uh, she can't be here today, but it's Gunda Bergmane from Latvia. Yeah, and I, I think that's a good thing in the program that we worked together in two teams internationally. It was, yeah, a pleasure. Hello. Yes, my name is Giacomo Benetti. Um, after studying my master's in film production in Hamburg, uh, I joined the atelier and uh, I'm very happy that I did so because it really, I mean, I'm half German, half French. So this was already something that drove me into the atelier and also to be really able to go deeper into international film producing um, and to have all those awesome seminars and everything. Uh, yeah, really brought me further and I'm very thankful for that. Um, I had the chance to produce in Paris together uh, with the French producer um, Jen Miola. Uh, we produced the movie Un Kilometre à Pied, which was directed by Pierre Lasserus from La Femis. And um, yeah, very, very happy that even though it was, of course, also a cool Corona driven year, um, everything went so well and we got through it. Thank you. The atelier is put in different parts and there are uh, there's a phase of theory um, with seminars, with workshop and with case studies. Could some of you participants tell us a little bit of those parts and who's teaching there and what you got out of these theory parts? Yeah, of course. I mean, um, it was really fascinating because like every seminar had, a, had different teachers, but everyone was really coming from the industry. So it was we never had the feeling of being schooled in a way um, because it was always 
um, like also not not people who worked in the industry 20 years ago, but really people who are now there and who know what they're talking about. And we were talking a lot also about the the current um, changes of the industry. And uh, yeah, it was it was um, it was really uh, we got great insights uh, by the fact that uh, we had those teachers who knew what they were talking about. We go through a film production from the beginning to an end, from the first idea uh, to a pitch to um, finding directors, uh, people working on the production, um, development, financing, um, production itself, uh, post-production, festival release, uh, distribution deals, sales. Um, the, the program covers uh, the whole course of uh, production um, on the German and on the French side. So you have a pretty good um, overview of what is what is there. Um, there's also um, an internship with either a world sales company or a distribution company. So there's also an insight into, you know, who do you produce um, the films for? What does the market look like? Um, which is very important and usually not so much included in um, production studies, it seems. And um, all the teachers uh, uh, who come to the atelier are active in the industry. Um, that is producers who produce films, for example, my, my business partner and I, uh, we're professors, but we also have a production company here in Berlin called Razor Film. Um, and yes, all, all the people coming, be they in world sales, in distribution, uh, exhibitors, professors for pitching, um, post-production managers, they are all uh, working at this point in time in the industry. And that is very, very important. So uh, we try to keep up to date, also reflect um, the uh, new forms of distribution in media with streamers um, and uh, yeah, so the the syllabus is currently uh, constantly updated and uh, this way also there is a first contact with people in financing in the industry for the participants. Peter, do you want to add something? Um, yeah, maybe I can add it. Um, like Giacomo, um, obviously, as he said, came from having uh, studied production already. But um, for me, and this maybe is also interesting for people who think about applying to the program, uh, for me as someone who basically came from the humanities and that didn't have a larger background in filmmaking, it was very interesting to really, as Roman has described it, also go through the stages in these seminars and in these weeks, um, especially of the first session of really going from basically working um, on a script and also even creatively being involved in some um, script writing um, and analysis, but then through yeah going through everything from copyright questions um, to in eventually even um, agents, um, festival uh, cycles, all of these things. Um, so that was very, um, yeah, very just interesting and great to to get into this and really have it all so com, um, compressed combined um, in this short amount of time which yeah was really helpful i guess it's also interesting because it's uh it's international based and not just from one country olivia can you say something to that what's the difference in between producing uh, for your home country and then producing internationally mm, yeah i mean i learned that uh we're happy that we would have co-producers somewhere in the countries that they know the rules and how different it is also to apply for fundings and i mean we went through the funding system and it's also in each country different and i think uh, we're um yeah that what i learned from that uh, i can i have to rely on the co-producer and they are in their country and we're here and we know our system they know this system but yeah we 
uh, it was also great to like see how it works in France. And uh, we spoke to American producers and how the how it works there. And it was just really interesting to really hear and ask questions. And we could ask everything what we wanted, what we were interested in. And yeah, they were open to us and really answered everything. So it was uh, great, yes. Yeah, another part of the program is a big part is practice. You went to excursions to film festivals. You had internships. Uh, to Jung, would you say something about about that part of the program? Mm, it's a it's a big part of the program. I would say uh, um, the internship was uh, an, an extraordinary experience for me. I mean, it's, uh, uh, I mean, I have uh, experienced that before, but then it's uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, something I, I didn't get a chance to really fill into that hole of lack in my experience. And I mean, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's a very um, practical and also. Uh, you you work from uh, a to z on the uh, well i worked in a sales uh, company and i mean really daily work you have to know how to organize uh, meetings with uh, buyers from all over the world how to prepare a sales book how to collect magazines and reviews on the morning and uh, deliver them to the office and you know, uh, before the clients show up and something like that, something like that. Uh, and on a, a more um, contact level, I'd say uh, we got uh, also a chance to develop um, very uh, precious personal and professional contacts with other professionals in Europe. For example, other producers uh, from, uh, I don't know, uh, Austria or Germ uh, Germany uh, and uh, for me I'm a Chinese producer and uh, th these contacts are also very precious and useful for me uh, in the future yeah Tiku can you tell something about uh, the film festivals what did you do there and why was it important or exciting Oh, okay, yes. Uh, we attended throughout the year several film festivals. Um, two were online. It was like Berlin co-production market. And we discussed the catalog and how to approach the project creators, what to offer them and also what to take from them. And so on. Uh, we had these classes with Roman and it was super interesting. We also um, attended online um, Clermont Ferrand Film Festival. And uh, we had a pleasure to... Uh, discover amazing films. And in the end of the program, uh, we attended Cannes Film Festival where I was working at uh, Playtime Group, which is a sales company. And I am just so happy with this experience because you get to know everyone. Like you are part of the group, you are part of the company. Uh, additional value was that a Playtime Group involves three four companies so it's playtime and it's films boutique from berlin and it's a film constellation from london and it's b4 film from belgium so we had like events all together and i got to meet all the sales agents and everybody has their own niche so i got information about the films that were presented in their catalogs and i had very interesting talks with them like what size uh, what, for for example films of which genre which format which uh, size budget are meant for what type of territories where does it sell what kind of chances it has to different types of festivals and i got to know everyday life of a sales company and i found it like my one of the biggest passions um, apart from film producing. So it was amazing. And uh, just as Yushuan and Peter mentioned, it's it's really important to meet the people from industry who are active. And um, the one of the biggest values of this program is also networking part, because I definitely have a feeling that I know most of these people who I might need in my life. And we had direct contact with them. We know them with names, they know us. And um, uh, this is also why this program is so prestigious and um, it matters when you are an alumni of uh, Atelier Ludwig's Book Paris. And this is why I feel really lucky uh, to be part of this amazing group. The last part, as Roman already mentioned, uh, mentioned is 
producing your own short movie, uh, which he did, and now it's streaming on Max Ophel's Film Fest, where you start from from the red, from the beginning. I will start because um, basically the whole process starts really early on in the year. I mean, we basically start probably from the very first day because we know that we were going to work in teams. So I guess you start uh, very early on trying to see who might be a partner. Um, and then um, it really starts um, when um, the uh, scripts or the the potential scripts are being presented by the, the writers. So it really starts with the, the writers. Um, and there is a pitching session and um, that gets out. And we then we, the whole thing is put into motion and we start thinking who, who might want to, to produce which kind of topic would pick up the subject and make a script out of it together with the writer. Um, so that already starts pretty early on during the theoretical part of the program. And um, basically then it just keeps on going from there. The next step, of course, is to look for a director, um, which happened um, on the German side where I produced at least through, the, through another pitching session at the Film Academy. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and then by the time of the, of the Christmas break, the teams have kind of formed and you know, um, where things are going to be going and you kind of keep going from there. Um, so that's really how it takes off. Um, I would say maybe the others want to add more to that. Yeah, Chico, maybe you can tell something about also about the work, um, the international partnerships that you create uh, during the film production. Yes. So uh, a great thing is that the whole process evolves in front of you. Like it starts from the scratch, just as you said, it starts from the expose that we, we that we received from several screenwriters. In uh, France, we received 12 exposes and uh, we selected like two, three favorite ones. Then you have meetings with the script writers. We worked with Sami Andre Ali and Leon Noel from FEMIS. And um, because you are, um, because the Atelier Ludwigsburg Paris is about creative producing, uh, I didn't say that. And you are kind of expected to be creatively invested and that's the great part. So you collaborate with these writers and you bring some of the ideas and also you are kind of a story editor. And <clears throat> You sit down with the script writers and think about the, maybe changing the script, not really changing, but like developing in, it in some way. And then you include the director uh, from the same school and you work on it together. And throughout these three, four months, it uh, changes a lot. And finally, you also adapt it to the circumstances. What are the resources? Where can it be shot? Then you work on finding the locations. And also you have to take into consideration different types of challenges. For example, COVID was a really big challenge this year. And we had around 40 people on set, which was a really, really um, big challenge. And uh, we made it, we had like four day shoot. And um, it was a really great experience because you also, as a producer from this program, you get to be a production manager on set, both of the both of the co-producers. So it is an immense experience because in France, it's also different. Like if we compare it to Georgia and I have only uh, seen how Georgian sets are working. I mean, the film, film professionals and uh, Georgian sets. And then what you do is you take care of the press kit, the deliveries, you work with the cinematographer and try to find the best deals from the rentals and so on, rental companies. Then you have the shooting, you work on the post-production, also you recruit all the crew that you need. So we send a lot of letters to many, many people. And this is how you get in touch with most of the alumni and students of the film schools. And then you get to, <clears throat> Uh, so what you learn next in Atelier program is distribution, um, marketing, and also festivals, how festivals work. So you do it like from the scratch and you have this story that in front of your eyes becomes a film and then you develop a distribution strategy, which we are still doing right now. And so in this one year, you do everything that sometimes for like di different films take from three to seven years. 
and you have it all in front of your eyes. So yeah, this is very much appreciated and uh, really, really interesting, but also very intense, of course. Olivia, can you add something? What's the difference in between producing for Germany and, and having a co-production for from example for example from France? So I so I am from Germany. I produced in Germany, so it was for me, I think, easier than for my partner. She had some challenges because uh, she just spoke English and um she did all the crew communication and we kind of split it and it was uh, we figured out our way how to work and it actually went really good um she was a little bit scared in the beginning that she would have trouble with because she can't speak german and no one would listen to her but it was totally not the way because uh, like germany everyone will understand you if you speak english and i think um she had more uh yeah thinking about problems than than I had what language wise what it was but I think uh yeah it's I mean you face always you have you, there are always challenges you have to calculate kind of and uh the interesting part was that there were so many challenges that were unexpected for in our project uh that yeah it's 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 hard it was hard it was tough but um Yeah, it was fun at the same time. It was so fast all together and we had to work uh, and uh, we kind of did parallel things. We already started to get our team together, have meetings, and then we had uh, some Zoom meetings with um, some really interesting people. So we really had cool days and yeah, I think to the co-producing, I, I, I mean, it was interesting for me that the my Latvian um, co- or producer or partner, uh, how she worked and we kind of really learned from each other, each other. So it was nice. Roman, how do you choose the participants for the bro program and how many participants are in one year in a program? The, the selection process is, come, is in two steps. Um, first, there is a written application um, where the applicants have to write about themselves, do film analysis, and also tell us uh, what their motivation is and uh, send in proof that they have previous professional experience in the field because this is mandatory um, to become part of the atelier program. Um, the second phase is very traditional. Uh, we do interviews. Um, and uh, the, the, the nicest is when people can come in, but you know, in cases they are far away, uh, like Tico or Yuxuan, uh, for example, they, it, it could be done um, via Zoom. Uh, in a normal year, which is actually uh, when we do not deal with COVID, um, it's 18 participants. Um, and in in COVID years now uh, we went down to 12 because we wanted to make sure that we have as many on-site classes as possible um, our experience like any other um, uh, university uh, program is that um, zoom is all fine but it cannot fully replace uh, the uh, in-person experience. And of course, um, the year of the atelier is also a year where a group is being formed, uh, where people bond with each other. They go through good times and bad times together. They experience a lot of dramas with uh, short film productions and so on. And uh, they also share wonderful moments at festivals and in the different schools. And um, this is, uh, these are bonds that stay for life and that are later on nurtured in the organization of the Atelier Network, which is probably one of the best network um, and alumni associations that I know. Um, they are independent from us, um, but it's uh, very well functioning. Um, people are active from long time ago. The Atelier now exists more than 20 years. Um, and uh, the European audiovisual industry goes there 
uh, when they also need new uh, new staff. So a lot of job offers come in and it's a good network also when you want to co-produce uh, across borders. Giacomo, could you tell us what was your favorite part of the year or your favorite moment? What did you, I mean, I guess there are a lot of things, uh, but what was something that you say, I took it now from, from that year? Uh, yeah, like you said before, I mean, there were a lot of good moments and also being as a group together with all those people was definitely uh, one of the greatest things. But if you want me to point at something in particular, I would also uh, go in the direction that I think um, already Tico mentioned um, when we were in Cannes and were part of uh, Uh, like when we did an internship, uh, I did mine at a company uh, named Wolf, which is, uh, was Berlin based. Um, but I worked um, with them for six movies in Cannes and it was wonderful. I mean, uh, the whole combination of, of this film festival being there, working for, for a company that you just got to know, but uh, with great uh, persons. That was really, I think, um, yeah. If you want me to point it out, it, it would have been my highlight. Jishan, what would you tell someone who wants to apply? What would you say? What Do it. Was <laughs> <laughs> I have no other things to, to add. I mean, personally, I really, um, I really want more. Uh, I hope it doesn't sound racist, but I, I want more Asian uh, upcoming producers uh, try the program because um, I mean it's a very good program and uh, Asia has its uh, kind of own uh, special market uh, it, it's a little bit independent but also relies a, um, very much on the European market maybe also yeah, US market but it's a different story And uh, I also want to add something uh, particular uh, regarding China itself, mm, because we are we're living in a very difficult uh, time right now. And uh, if we want to do something different, uh, because we we don't we cannot directly cooperate with uh, with uh, with the US, and many emerging directors want to work with Europe. But uh, very, very few people have had this kind of experience, either had done uh, a good training in Europe and have, have the, the sufficient knowledge to do things or have a working experience in the, in the field. So I, I would say it's, uh, it will benefit uh, a lot of young talents uh, in my country, at least. So yeah, I just do it. I'm not a branding Nike, just, <laughs> but yeah, do it. <laughs> Roman, as I know, it's, I mean, it's as far as I know the only program, but I don't know, there are probably more programs that are based on this international thinking of producing. But for me, it's very special. Um, can you say something about that in for the end. <laughs> yes, uh, it has always been special and it stayed special. Um, uh, when the program started, uh, which was actually set up by uh, German Chancellor Gerhard Schröder and Jacques Chirac, uh, the um, president of France, um, they, they wanted to start, uh, they, they wanted to intensify the German-French relationship and um, also in film. Uh, and out of this came uh, uh, a pan-European global um, training program um, that is actually wonderful to witness how it keeps growing, uh, how we branch out. We have people here from honestly, literally all over the place and the place is the world. You know, there you have uh, Yushuan sitting in the dark of the night of Beijing. Uh, there's Tiku in Tbilisi. Uh, here we are in Germany. Um, and that is really, really wonderful that uh, all these cooperations um, are possible on the human side. And um, the, the thing um, is, of course, also in the atelier, you learn to experience what, under which circumstances other people live and try to produce films. And 
the world is let's say I, I always think of the world is a violent paradise but you know there are places where it's more difficult than in Europe uh, there are places where it's politically not easy to cooperate, where the finances are not there, where the infrastructure is not there. Um, but we try to, to also instill in every single one of them and every, every participant brings that already to the table when they start the program, um, that they try to overcome obstacles and start um, positive cooperations with each other so that things are being born through immense difficulties uh, that the world benefits from and that brings us closer to each other across borders. Um, this is what we're working on. It sounds very big, but I think it is very big. And in Nucleo, it's uh, wonderful. And what everyone in the atelier uh, makes possible every year. Every year. So uh, it's a great privilege to have um, all those participants applying and then joining the atelier from all over the world and working them and seeing them grow into yeah strong producers and working in all corners of the audio visual industry and also for the people teaching uh, we get the feedback that it's really interesting for them they benefit from it because they get to meet the next generation and it's a uh, it's an exchange of, you know, how do you see the world? I'm 53, you know, I can only learn from them. I can pass on my experience, all of those mistakes, you know, that are behind us. Of course, also the things that worked out, but um, it is encouraging for my generation um, to learn how the world is being viewed, things that we find awful is something that is given for a younger generation. And that is just wonderful. It's a give and take across borders, across age groups, across genders, across everything. So, yeah. Thank you. For every application, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I think that was like the most beautiful and wonderful end. <laughs> yes, but I also want to say a big thank you. We haven't done that yet. And a big shout out to Team Max Ophüls uh, for cooperating uh, with the Atelier um, since such a long time and sticking to it and showcasing the yeah. short films. Um, that is just wonderful. We know that you guys have a very difficult time and you do it now in the second year with so much enthusiasm. And I think we share this enthusiasm. This is what is wonderful. And, um, you know, we, we all try to make it happen against all odds. And uh, Saarbrücken is a wonderful festival and we want to thank every single one of you over there. And we wish you all the best for the upcoming festivals. And we are very curious to see, um, to see the films. Thank you. Thank you.